Okay, when it comes to math, students love word problems. Now, that is kind of a bit of a joke, and, you know, I have to try. I know we're talking about math here, so hopefully you're, you're probably saying to me, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? I hate word problems. Well, listen, word problems are effectively an application of the skills that you're learning. I mean, think about it. Math is all about trying to solve problems, and what we have here is a nice algebra word problem. Let me go ahead and read it to you, then we'll talk about how we're gonna solve this. So a collection of 49 nickels and pennies is worth 85 cents. How many of the coins are nickels? So if you think you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually gonna show you the solution here in a moment. And then of course, we're gonna walk through step by step how to solve this algebra word problem. But this is a fairly typical uh, algebra word problem for those of you that are gonna be at, uh, I would say the algebra one level and beyond. So if you're taking a class like algebra one, certainly algebra two, you should be able to handle this problem. But anyways, we're gonna get into all of this in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher I've been teaching math for decades. It's my absolute passion to teach mathematics. And I can tell you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Even if you failed a couple math courses or if you're failing right now, you can turn this all around. Don't have this kind of identity that you're terrible at math. You'll always be incapable of learning the subject. What you need is some encouragement and uh, most importantly, great math instruction, clear, understandable and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying for some sort of special test, something like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you uh, are homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that cover all these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my notes my math notes in the description because you need something to study from. And I know a lot of you out there are not taking notes or you're taking poor notes. You have to learn how to be an awesome note taker if you expect to be awesome in mathematics. But in the meantime, you can use my math notes if you want. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so uh, what's the first step in solving any problem, okay? Especially word problems. Well, what you wanna do is read the problem more than once, okay? So let's gonna reread this one more time so we understand what's going on. Then you can think about it. Now, I'm gonna show you the solution here in just one moment, but here's the deal. Even if you're not quite sure you know how to figure this out, you should pause the video and try to work on it for a little bit just to see what you know, okay? See if you were kind of thinking uh, in you know maybe a logical way or you were kind of going in the right direction. But the problem, again, is a collection of 49 nickels and pennies. So we have nickels and pennies and we have 49 total coins, okay? So that's how you want to interpret this. A collection of 49 nickels and pennies is worth 85 cents. So how many of the coins are nickels? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The answer is there are nine nickels. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is very impressive. Certainly, you've definitely earned a nice little happy face, an A++. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you like 110% and multiple stars so you can celebrate your algebra awesomeness, okay? That's excellent if you were able to do this problem. Now, if you came up with a different answer and you might be thinking to yourself, hmm, I think you're wrong, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I did it right, you're wrong. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual solution. So when you're solving any word problem, the key is you want to read the problem more than once and then you need to kind of like uh, drill in on what is the question being asked, okay? So you gotta really make sure you understand what's going on. So we have a bunch of coins, we have some nickels and some pennies, we have uh, 49 total coins, and the value of all those coins is 85 cents, but we wanna know how many of those coins are nickels. Okay, so let's go ahead and use some algebra to solve this problem. All right, so we're gonna just take this one step at a time. Once you've kind of like read the problem at least two times. You've got a firm understanding of what's going on. 
what you need to do is start to uh, assign some variables. So I'm going to let n, okay, n for nickels. We're going to let n because we're we're trying to solve for nickels, right? So we want to assign a variable that is um, in alignment to the question being asked, okay? So we're going to let n equal the number of nickels because I'm trying to solve for the number of nickels. So we're going to let a variable n uh, being equal to the number of nickels. Now you could let that variable be x, y, doesn't make a difference. But uh, kind of a suggestion when you're doing word problems, something like this, where we're looking for nickels. So it's kind of just good practice to use the variable n. It stands for nickels, right? So now I think that's the kind of easy part. So we're going to let n equal the, to the number of nickels. Now we have to kind of figure out uh, a variable or an expression for pennies. So we know we have 49 uh, total coins, right? So here, let's say we have like a bunch of coins here, da, 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 da. And we have uh, all these coins right here. There are 49 coins. Just to kind of lay this out just in case some of you uh, don't see this. Now, here's 49. If this right here, this many are nickels, these are N amount of nickels, how many pennies are left? Well, it would be this all these right here would be the remaining pennies, right? So our pennies would be equal to the 49 coins that we have, and we're gonna take away the amount of nickels we have, right? So whatever is remaining is the number of pennies we have. So pennies is equal to 49 minus N, okay? So this could be a little bit confusing uh, to some of you out there. That's what I'm kind of really explaining it to you, but this is how you have to kind of set these things up. You really have to kind of Think about this logically. We want to express the number of nickels and pennies in relation to one variable n, okay? All right, so hopefully this makes sense to you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the next step of the problem. Now the next step of the problem is to try to create some sort of equation. And let's just kind of go back to the actual problem here, okay? So we know that we have 49 nickels. We use that information because uh, we have N nickels and we have 49 minus N pennies. But what we haven't used yet is 85 cents. Okay, So typically, almost all the time, word problems, with the information in the word problem, you're going to have to use in some sort of form or manner. Sometimes word problems put in extra information that you don't need. But this particular problem, we're going to need to tie in this 85 cents and we're going to have to build ourselves an equation because we can't solve for a variable unless we have some sort of uh, equation, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at an equation here, all right? And then we'll kind of actually build the actual one. So the number of nickels times five cents. Now we're going to talk about the value, right? So all these coins right here are worth 85 cents, okay? All these coins here, if we're going to add them up, say, hey, how much is this worth uh, you know, in terms of money? Uh, value of money, it's 85 cents. So how do we figure that out? Well, you figure out how many nickels you have and you're gonna multiply it by five cents. Then you're gonna add that to the number of pennies you have and you're gonna multiply that by one cents. And then you're gonna add up this total amount. We know that it's gonna come out to 85 cents. So this is effectively the equation that we need to uh, build. And we know the number of nickels, that's N, and we know the number of pennies, that is what, 49 minus N. So now we are gonna actually go ahead and build an, uh, a, an, an equation here, okay? Now, I'm gonna caution uh, you that we can't just use five and one and 85 when we're talking about cents. So in algebra, okay, when you're solving money problems, things like this, this is a typical type of problem you're gonna encounter, things that deal with coins or uh, dollars and cents, you need to convert your cents into decimals, okay? That's really a kind of a small detail that some of you may not have known, but that's why I'm making this um, this video. So let's go ahead and actually uh, translate this big kind of big picture equation to an actual equation that we can work with. All right, so again, the one thing that we have to do is convert our cents into decimals. I'll show you how that's done in just one second. So let's go ahead and, and uh, build this equation. The number of nickels, okay, of course that's N. I'm gonna use a different highlighter here. Okay, so that's N. We have N number of nickels, right? We need to multiply that by five cents. So 
five as a decimal, divide that by 100. Okay, so that's gonna be 0 0.05 because there's 100 pennies in a dollar, right? So if we're dealing, here we're dealing with all cents, but let's say the total value of the pennies was $1.85. Well, you could see here we have 0.85 cents. So that's why you want to use decimals um, as to express your cents, right? That's really, really important. So we have uh, 0 0.05 for our five cents plus the number of pennies, remember, is 49 minus N, and then one cent is 0 0.01 as a decimal, and that's going to be equal to 85 cents, which is 0.85. Okay, so if there's one part of this problem that some of you may be confused about, it is converting your cents to decimals, or again, when you're working with money, think in terms of decimals. Okay, so now we have a lovely equation here, and uh, this point forward, it really comes down to your ability to solve nice linear equations. So let's go ahead and focus in on that part right now. Okay, so what do we have here? N times uh, 0 0.05, so you don't want to write uh, the N in front of this. This is the coefficient, so we're going to write this as 0 0.05N plus this 0 0.01 I have to distribute here and here. Okay, so this is a case for the distributive property. 0 0.01 times 49 is 0.49. 0 0.01 times this n right here is 0 0.01 n, okay? Of course, we have that minus sign right there as equal to 0.85. All right, so what do we do now? Well, we're going to have to combine like terms. So this is a negative, just to be very clear about this, this is a plus negative 0 0.01 n, and I have a 0 0.05 n here. I'm going to go ahead and combine these like terms, so 0 0.05 n plus a negative 0 0.01 n is 0 0.04 n plus 0.49 is equal to 85. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, what you're, what you're gonna do, and you can use your calculator, by the way, just show your kind of step, uh, kind of the results of the step, is you're gonna subtract 0.49 from both sides. Now, I'm not showing that here because it's kind of implied. When you're at a kind of higher level of math, let's say, uh, certainly algebra one, algebra two, you don't necessarily have to show this minus 0.49 because your teacher will kind of understand what you're doing, but you do need to show this, the result of this step. So at least this amount of work. Okay, so we're sub uh, subtracting 0.49 from both sides of the equation. So 0.85 minus 0.49 is gonna be equal to 0.36. And so now we're down to 0.04n is equal to 0.36. How do we solve for n? We're simply gonna divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.04. So in your calculator, you're gonna go 0.36 divided by 0 0.04, and you end up with a nice integer value, n is equal to nine. Now, why is that important? That's the number of nickels we have, right? So n, uh, when we assigned our variables, was the number of nickels, but let's say n uh, came out to be like 8.2. Now, would that make sense? No, you can't have 8.2 nickels, right? So you're looking for integer values. You can have one nickel, two nickel, three nickel, not 0.2 of a nickel, right? You're not gonna have like uh, one, two, three, and then like a 0.2. So again, this is a nice integer value, which we were kind of expecting, you know, of course, if we did this problem right. All right, so hopefully, you know, um, you know, you understand something here, but this is a typical classic type of algebra problem. You're going to see algebra word problems involve money. And I think if you kind of understand this problem, you should be able to tackle most of the problems, you know, certainly at the algebra one level that are like this. Okay. So if you need help with algebra and algebra word problems, a couple suggestions. One, I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel on word problems and algebra word problems, but you might want to check out like my algebra one, or Algebra 2 course if you really want to get in to various level of uh, various types of word problems because word problems come, you know, basically an application of the skills, the chapters that you're, uh, you're learning. So here we're kind of um, uh, using a linear equations to solve this particular word problem, but you'll have word problems that involve systems or logarithmic equations or radical equations, etc. So, you know, when you're talking about word problems, 
they're kind of all over the place in a math course, okay? So that's why you can't just say, hey, can you teach them how to do word problems? Well, you have to learn the math, then apply those math skills. So, you know, there's really no kind of uh, shortcut to learning all word problems. However, you do need to practice, and hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.